Hello, and welcome to a special uh, on the road edition of Cyberdeck Users Weekly. I'm Paul, and I'm on the road. And so that's why I didn't do an episode in the middle of the week. Um, been a little busy. I'm in Ohio right now, about to go to Austin, Texas. Just trying to be a trying to be a super spreader out here, you know. Um, so I have been working. Well, that's not true. Last night I wrote. Uh, uh, most of an essay about UX and Bitcoin. Um, I feel like this is sort of the, a perennial topic that comes up in Bitcoin. Uh, and I've had thoughts about it for a while that I had a hard time really turning into a coherent piece. And I feel like I, I kind of had like a good angle on it last night. And so I wrote a bunch about it, and then I feel like it kind of slipped through my fingers right at the end there. Like, maybe I'm still, I'm kind of missing something. Like, I feel like there's a simple idea that I'm I'm just not y- using words for, um, that I'm kind of dancing around, possibly. Maybe I'm scared. I don't know. Um, but I thought I'd just sort of read slash paraphrase what I have so far. Maybe I'll use this as an opportunity to come up with some great new ideas and I'll put them into the piece on the spot and then maybe I'll publish it um, someday. Well, whenever I'm publishing this episode, I should probably put the text out. Uh, There'll be something out there pretty soon, I guess. So the basic idea is called... uh, Better won't be easy. Oh wait, one more, one more preamble aspect. If you were wondering what happened to the episode last weekend, I did a video episode. So people who subscribed to the newsletter saw it. I don't think I even tweeted about it because I was being kind of like sneaky. But there's a on the YouTube, and I'll I'll, I'll link it in this newsletter too. Um, yeah, Just trying trying new weird things, trying to. Keep you guessing. Okay, better won't be easy is the concept. The The real core of it, the core thought is that there are some things that an easy-to-play guitar, uh, easy-to-play piano, um, easy-to-do exercise, um, easy, low effort relationship, you know, there's some things that have a sort of, they're, they're just sort of diametrically opposed to, to, uh, convenience in some sense. It's that like convenience and ease would, it sort of is missing the point. Um, not that, any of these things you want to try and make arbitrarily more difficult, you know, with, with a guitar, uh, you, if you get a bad guitar and the bridge is warped and stuff like that, and it's too hard to press down the strings or the strings are old or, or, it, you know, it just doesn't make a lot of sounds. You got to play it. I mean, there's so many, or it goes out of tune all the time. Um, there's so many things that can make guitar more difficult than it has to be. But even if you have a great guitar, there's just the guitarness of it that is still very difficult to master. So where am I going with this? Well, the in in Bitcoin, there's this constant refrain. I don't know. That's probably overstating it. There's this thing that comes up a lot on Twitter. <laughs> Let's say that. And it's basically people who are wanting there to be better UX in Bitcoin. And on its face, I think it's pretty easy to do, agree with this. And probably in the mo- for the most part, I do agree with this. Bitcoin is this really beautiful, transformational, very important and sort of a weird, so difficult technology. And any ways that we can find to make Bitcoin easier to use can conceivably uh, 
improve the adoption and 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 get Bitcoin out to more people. And Bitcoin is all about you know it's a money. Um, it's a, it's all about the network effects. So the more people that are really you know into Bitcoin, the better it is for for anybody. So even from selfish reasons, you'd want there to be a better UX in Bitcoin. And you could hope. Uh, maybe like that's Jack Dorsey's plan, like Square Crypto is like, uh, you know, I got my Bitcoin bags, I want to pump them. Well, I'm going to, you know, do grants to improve Bitcoin software um, so that my bags pump, you know, in a real tangential way. But like maybe that's um, maybe that's actually the wisest, you know, course. But what I feel like a lot of times when I see the phrase better UX it bothers me because I feel like it's sometimes missing an aspect. Um, the way I've been trying to, so like, let's say, um, let's say you're lifting weights, okay? And you say, hey, Paul, you want to help me learn how to lift weights? And I'm like, sure, I'll read a book and then I'll try to tell you what you're supposed to do. I don't know. But let's say I somehow possessed good knowledge about weights and I was going to um, uh, coach you. And so you approach the weights and you try to pick them up and you're like, it's too heavy. And I said, well, start with something lighter. And you're like, no, why don't you lift them for me? Right? There's like that, there's that line, right? There is a point where you're doing the best you can and you are trying as hard as you can and, and and you need the bar to be lowered in some sense to where you're at so that you can continue to progress in lifting weights in this analogy. And then there's this point where if I'm just lifting the weights for, for you, you get literally no benefit, right? So there's a version of easy, there's a version of UX that is actually counter to what you were asking for in the first place. So when you say better UX, are you saying, do you want me to do it for you? Because then you aren't necessarily doing the thing that you were uh, hoping to accomplish. You know, it, the, the thing that you were, it, if, if what you're hoping to accomplish is that the weight goes up and down, uh, yes, I can help you with that. But if the thing that you're hoping to accomplish is strength or endurance or willpower or something like that, I can't help you in that sense specifically. So I think we just want to be uh, keep an eye out for where that distinction lies in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is better money, yeah, but it's also about a certain self sovereignty or at least a, a potential for self-sovereignty and that involves a lot of personal responsibility before i like just um totally repeat myself and everything i probably should start actually reading and then maybe i'll like take yeah i'll probably put some of that great pr great intro into the written piece uh later okay so better won't be easy in the bitcoin world there's a lot of conversation about ux Basically, if good things become easy to use, then people will use the good things. Right now, easy to use things are only available from Evil Corp and come with terrible trade offs. If only people could instead receive easy to use gifts from good open source, then the world can become a better place. So let's think this through. Let's take a common Bitcoin good thing, running your own node and make it as easy to use as possible. For those unfamiliar, running a Bitcoin node means running a piece of software that synchronizes with what you presume to be the Bitcoin blockchain, validates transactions against its own rules to make sure it is, in fact, the Bitcoin blockchain, and broadcasts your own transactions to that blockchain. And I've got a quote here from Pierre Rochard, who I really like this, this kind of tight summary. The ultimate test of consensus is whether your node software can receive payments that you consider to be Bitcoins, and you can send payments that your counterparty's node software considers to be Bitcoins. Okay, end quote. 
Among other potential analogies, a node is a little bit like a vote in the sense that based on what rules you adopt, typically these rules are deeply embedded in the software, but sometimes they're simple flags you can set when launching the node, you're signaling to everyone else on the network that you, what you believe to be true about Bitcoin. If there's a material difference of opinion on what Bitcoin is, then you end up with a hard fork. All of a sudden, you have two networks, two monies, where you once had one. It's simultaneously in most people's interest to make sure that there's only one Bitcoin while maintaining the immutability of Bitcoin's important properties, chief among these being the hard supply cap of 21 million. I think all that makes sense. I think that was a pretty good, clear explanation. Currently, it's kind of a pain in the ass to run a node. It's never been easy than it, easier than it is right now, but it's still a whole lot harder than installing an app on your phone. Here are some of the requirements. You probably want a dedicated machine to run it on, such as a Raspberry Pi, so that means some money. Uh, you need at least 500 gigabytes of free hard drive space to hold the blockchain. Uh, more money. Depending on the speed of your computer and of your connection, it can take days or even weeks to fully validate the blockchain. Time equals money. No matter how hard some open source projects try to make everything easy, you'll probably need to touch the command line at some point. Often a command prompt is represented as dollar sign, which really <laughs> makes you think. I was pretty proud of that. Um, okay, so now let's imagine the best UX. In UX stands for user experience. I think I've... Have I not mentioned that before? People figure it out. Let's say... The best UX for running a node, let's say you could click a URL, and maybe it's on someone's Instagram profile, so you don't even have to surf for it, and, and there in front of you would be a big green button that says, start a node. And you click the button, and you've started a node. And congratulations, you're fully noted. Don't you feel liberated and part of an important movement to take money out of the hands of government and give it back to the people? So you see this divide, right? This like, ah, can you lift it for me divide where you actually have lost any significance to you in this action. Okay, so, hmm, I continue in my written piece, but is this the absolute best UX? That's arguable. What's a node really anyway? That's kind of a technical term. Uh, I... One thing that kind of got me on this kick a little bit is I realized that uh, Strike, that new thing from Jack Mahler's, it's a beautiful, wonderful, very simple app. You load it up with money, and then you can pay lightning payments. It's wonderful. It's so easy. It doesn't mention the word Bitcoin on the whole uh, page. I think, I think I searched. I don't think it even mentions lightning. Maybe it says lightning quick or something like that. Uh, it obviously is not explaining nodes. You know, it's not, it, they don't need to explain any of the technicalities of Bitcoin. They have perfectly great UX because you are going to trust them to do this stuff for you. So yeah, what's a node really? That's kind of a technical term. Wouldn't it be best if it was just started for you without you even needing to bother clicking the button or even visiting the link? Worth thinking about. In fact, I actually thought about it, and this is just a custodial service like Coinbase or Cash App or Strike. Like They run a node on your behalf, and you don't even have to know what a node is. Like What could be easier UX? Not only is it easy to start the node, you don't even have to start the node. You don't even have to know what a node is, right? It's easy. <laughs> I think, I, man... See, when I read this without my commentary, I feel like it's not making a ton of sense. But man, when I read it and then I comment on it, I feel like this is all coming together. But so let's stick with our mega node button UX, right? That website with one big button, start a node. Created for us by good open source. Okay, well, who is paying the server costs for my node? Whose hard drive is storing the blockchain? 
how did it accomplish the technical feat of an instantaneous sync? Remember, part of the bad UX of running a node is it just takes a long time for a node to come up to, you know, oh, what a terrible user experience. It takes a long time to get this up and running. You know, I want something that goes quickly. And this takes a week on a Raspberry Pi. Like, this is bad. Uh, so, you know, this good UX version will will have instantaneous sync, of course. How will my wallet software speak with this node when it needs to broadcast a transaction? Oh, shit, I say, meaning I have to add the explicit tag to this podcast now. How can I trust that this is doing anything at all? I mean, I click the button. It says it started in a node, but how do I know any of the meaningful properties are true about it? Because if you think about it, even if some whale mega donor set up free nodes for anyone who wanted them, what would happen the next time there's a controversy in Bitcoin? How would these nodes behave? How would they vote? The easiest node of all turns out to be almost entirely worthless. And I think I, you kind of have to understand a little bit about what a node is a node's relevance is to the Bitcoin network, which I kind of tried to do at the start. Um, but <laughs> someone, else, I mean, a lot of people don't even think of a, a, a node running on like a VPS, uh, like a like DigitalOcean or something like that, as really a, a node in the full sense, because it's almost like, you know, that VPS, uh, it, it's a lot to get into, but th th there's something about like the, the hard to run nodes, the the node running in your house, in your closet, on a Raspberry Pi or on whatever server that you own and you physically custody, having some somehow possibly more significance than a million nodes ran by a script. I don't know. It's kind of hard to grasp. I guess I don't really even know. But it seems like there's something to it. Otherwise, why would it be so important to, to run notes? Um, maybe this sounds like a silly example because, of course, Bitcoiners don't want a service like this. They just want a better UX for existing tasks. They don't want someone else to run a node for them. They just want it to be easier to run a node. And how will it be easier to run a node? Someone else will make it easier. This is maybe where I lose the plot. <clears throat> I guess what I'm saying is that the work involved in making nodes happen is going to be done by someone. UX isn't asking for something to be easy. It's asking for something to be easy for you, which almost always involves someone else working harder. This, in my opinion, is the straightforward answer to why most open sourced open source software has shitty UX. Most open source software is a developer scratching their own itch. Once, once the software is easy enough to use for their own purposes, they have very little motivation to push beyond that point, especially because imagining and researching and testing everyone else's uses for this software is time consuming, expensive, and has diminishing returns. Returning to the node example, it's interesting that whoever does the real work of running a node, the com computer, hard drive, time, um, command line, is the person who has access to and control of all the important properties of that node. If it was ridiculously easy to spin up your own node, so easy that a bot farm could do it, what would that even mean in relation to the Bitcoin network? And maybe I should figure out what that would mean before I, I publish this. But I, I feel like at the point that it's so easy to run a node that you could do it with a bot farm, maybe there'll be wars of bot farms. I don't know. Um, but I can't imagine anything. If if you could spam a million votes and for and and turn Bitcoin into your own vision of something, you know, Bitcoin is fundamentally broken. So so there are going to be reasons why 
either you can't do that or why that won't have any relevance to the, the real Bitcoin network. Not that it should be weirdly or arbitrarily hard to run a node or start a Bitcoin mining operation or create a multi-sig transaction or operate a lightning routing node, only that there will always be core fundamental challenge to anything that has any economic relevance. What you do in relation to the Bitcoin network will either be trivial in effort and therefore trivial in consequence, or it will be some quantity of difficult and sometimes, but not always, that difficulty will match your reward. So I don't want to go like full labor theory of value here where the only way to get any reward is, is um, specific amounts of work or something like that. Obviously, you know, you could have capital, you could, you could have risk, you could, there's lots of other ways to, to get a reward. But yeah, anyways, anyone who is trying to get their personal life on track knows it involves doing what is hard and often uncomfortable for long-term gains. Don't eat that cookie now. Don't feel like shit tomorrow. You know what? Let me reread that sentence. Don't eat that cookie now. Don't feel like shit tomorrow. Run more, one more lap than you feel like running. Actually gain endurance for the next run. Broach a difficult conversation before a bad mood can settle over a household. So why do we expect to get better technology results by applying the same amount of effort we applied to downloading Venmo or swiping left on Tinder. And, um, yeah, this is, I mean, this is kind of why I'm, uh, uh, to me, this is a bigger story than Bitcoin. This is, I think once we understand that doing the easiest thing possible is not always how you get the best results out of technology, like, like, that the, the, the only way I can access technology is if it is so perfectly easy. Um, if, if we get out of that mindset, I think we could get a lot more out of technology, like a lot more value. And, 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 and more importantly, ex the thing that we want to get out of it instead of the thing that whoever bothered to make really good UX wanted for us to get out of it. So to get off my high horse... And back on the UX pony, I do want to be clear that I'm not excusing bad UX. I hate bad UX. I hate it when computers are dumber than they should be. I hate bad text layouts and bad color choices. I hate it when you have to turn stuff off and on again to get it to work when it should have just worked the first time. After years spent in the command line, I'm still pretty uncomfortable there. But I've also been around long enough to be skeptical of good UX. Good according to whom? Good UX, like good architecture, guides the user to where it wants them to go. The most highly praised user experiences are usually some dramatic... Uh, typo. Some dramatic restriction of choice. By eliminating superfluous options, a single path becomes easy. And is this what we truly want in Bitcoin? Perhaps ease of use should be viewed as a liability, much like the addictive sugar in that cookie. Is this UX bad because the developer was lazy and or blind, or because he was attempting to maximize my optionality with this software? Is this UX good because the developer loves me and has a great aesthetic or because he was attempting to trick me into using Bcash, right? I, in some, again, back to why maybe this is a Bitcoin specific piece, stakes are a little higher, you know, when it's money. But I don't know, it's important. Often, often this comes down to trust. And of course, the trust aspect is very hard to scale. A competent designer of software has an incredible amount of power to nudge his user toward the activities he prefers 
And when you ask someone else to make software easy for you, you're kind of asking them to make decisions on your behalf. One potential way to think of a healthy amount of UX makes it easy versus personal effort might be my favorite mantra from an old exercise VHS I watched growing up. This is Dan Fouts, quarterback clinic, by the way. You can train through the soreness, but you don't want to train through pain. Most people understand that a certain level of resistance is the whole point of exercise. While pain is often a signal that something is wrong and maybe you should stop. There are obviously wrong, obviously incorrect, obviously harder than it has to be aspects of interacting with Bitcoin. Hopefully those rough edges will be shaved away over time. In fact, I'm pretty confident that a lot of people are working on improving these aspects of Bitcoin as we speak. But you can't sand Bitcoin down to nothing because the very core of Bitcoin is self-sovereignty and therefore self-responsibility. In some sense, if coins aren't truly losable, they aren't truly ownable. And now, I don't know if that's true at all, but that just sounded really good when I wrote it out, so stay in. If you ultimately want to offload responsibility to someone else, I'm not even going to be mad at all, to be honest. I, I wrote, I'm not even going mad at all, to be honest. In many aspects of our lives, we're happy to do that. It's a division of labor sort of thing. But if money is an important enough issue to you that you want to take radical ownership over it, that's going to involve effort and soreness and probably some pain. I love paying to have my laundry done, but I'm not going to outsource the raising of my children. And by raising children, I don't mean pressing the raise my children good button in an app with great UX. I mean the actual uncomfortable and inconvenient part, the proof of work that confirms to my kids and myself that I actually give a shit. And there's a parenthetical, I don't actually have kids, I just feel very strongly about how I would theoretically raise kids or I'd have some. All right. I think it's important to remember how seriously serious Bitcoin is. We're not dealing with a fairy tale system founded on dreams and wishes and proof of stake. Bitcoin security is measured in exahash per second. The hundreds of gigabytes worth of blockchain is most likely the most thoroughly vetted ledger to ever exist on the planet. Bitcoin doesn't take shortcuts. Bitcoin's, Bitcoin wears its trade-offs on its sleeve. I think there's a piece about that. I should put the link in there. This is a, there's a really good piece. We can hope for breakthroughs that will make it easier to interact with this network. Perhaps U3XO will make lightweight mobile nodes possible and useful. Hopefully hard drive capacity will outpace the rise in blockchain size. Maybe a cheap ASIC can speed up the time it takes to verify the blockchain. I have a great optimism for breakthroughs that will help key, key management make sense and feel tangible and non-confusing. In some ways, Bitcoin is simpler money than the old normie system, and I hope eventually interacting with, with Bitcoin will feel that way. I absolutely love playing with Strike, the Strike app, and spinning Satoshi's like it's the easiest thing in the world. I guess my question is, what do you want to accomplish via better UX? What will this better UX be for? For what? For what? That's a donkey reference. I don't know. See, that's where I tra trailed off. I've been trying this whole time. Literally, it was like one of the first notes I had down is that Bitcoin is money for enemies. Um, which, you know, makes sense. In a lot of these cases, the reason why they're a bad idea to have someone else run your node software for you because it doesn't, you don't get the money for enemies properties. You can't, because you're not um, self verifying and self assuring everything, you are more susceptible to uh, a, ba a bad guy. 
if the bad guy is the if is the operator of the node software, right? Um, Bitcoin doesn't re- require that kind of trust. Bitcoin can be made much easier with all sorts of trust, uh, you know. But you, in some sense, you kind of have to dig in deep enough to know what amount of trust you want to give over. And if you do give over 100% of trust, you really have no assurances that Bitcoin is doing anything special for you that can't be done in the existing monetary system. I think it will. I do think you'll probably still be better off in the long run in a Bitcoin system, even where you don't uh, self-custody anything and you don't uh, do any of the work because hopefully other people will be doing the work to kind of uh, keep bad bad actors in check somewhat. But really, you don't have any guarantee. Where you, you, There are some actual guarantees of the good properties of Bitcoin where you to you know, take responsibility. Uh, let me just scroll around in my various notes. Like I've been working on this idea for a long time. So I'll just like pop into the text document every few months and like write like a meaningless paragraph down. I really like guitars won't reach mass adoption until they're easier to play. Um, Yeah, ultimately, the most simple and easy to use products just make a ton of choices on your behalf. If you aren't okay with those choices, you have a few options. You can suffer in silence. You can complain on Twitter. You can go without, go without, or you can find a product that's harder to use but does what you want, right? So not that you don't, again, obviously, I'm not saying that we shouldn't try to make things that are hard to use easier to use. But if, if we remove all optionality from them, at some point, you know, kind of what's the point a little bit? Yeah, nobody says I want a piano that's easier to play. I kind of say that sometimes. It's fun to play like those pianos that are like, are like a, a digital version of a piano that like keeps you in a scale. So you can just slam on the keys and everything sounds in tune. That's nice. Um, ooh, I like this line. Easy is difficult. <laughs> Oh, that's a pretty good title. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a question to ask. If the developer of your node software had a different idea about what Bitcoin is than you do, how would you rectify that situation? That's why it's important to kind of, in some sense, go the long way, do the difficult version of this so that you have this, you still are exerting some amount of control you're exerting whatever it means to run a node in some sense uh let's see hash rates not equal to miners are mercenaries i like that um the the ultimate test consensus path path of least resistance is rarely the best path so why should it be the best path as a consumer you can't rely on someone else being ethical you only have control over your own actions a tv without tracking that costs two hundred dollars more oh yeah there's this tweet (laughs) one of the early ones that that got me into this i should wrap up soon but Pete Cor- uh, P- Peter Cormack has got a, a podcast called What Bitcoin Did, and he's got a thread about UX design. The process of UX design is relatively simple. It is the removal of friction points to ensure maximum through, through uh, I think it means throughput of users from point A to point B. I often recommend Steve Krug's book, Don't Make Me Think. And he's got a link to this book by Steve Craig says, don't make me think a common sense approach to web usability. And so the P. Corman sort of lists a lot of things about you. I mean, I maybe I should read some more of this. UX testing is also relatively straightforward. Present journey, provide the user with a goal, ask them to explain their thought process out loud as they attempt goal, document friction points, update, repeat. 
With five testers, you, sh- you can usually find 80% of problems, over 80% of the problems. Fix, fix themse- fixes themselves are usually move the position of a button, reduce options, rename label, add help text, etc. Usually very simple changes that make a difference to throughput. We are plugging the holes in a leaky bucket. Whether you want Bitcoin to moon or you want more people running a full node, technical snobbery is a friction point. Patronizing Bitcoiners for what you deem easy does not move the dial forward. I would agree with that in the sense that pretending this is easy is definitely not helpful. But but the, the alternative to that is not the only alternative to that is not making it easy. In fact, it's acknowledging the difficulty and, and in some sense embracing that as a part of an important property of what, what you're even doing. Is running a full node easy? Yeah, you just plug and play. Uh, but should I prune? What the hell is pruning? What is command line? How should I validate UTXOs? Bitcoin Core node or CASA. Anyone who thinks this is easy is in a bubble. And yeah, again, this isn't easy. It's not easy to learn all of these things. But if you think of why is it someone running a node, you know, it's like it's like imagine if you had a safe in your house and but you didn't know why. And you didn't know what it was for. You didn't know what goes inside of the safe or outside of the safe. You didn't know how to open the safe. Like, why Why even ha- bother, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you, if, if you can't understand, and I'm not saying these are easy things to understand, but if you can't understand what's happening with this um, uh, <clears throat> node software, why it's doing what it's doing, what it is trying to do, then there's really kind of no point to you even running one. I don't. I don't think anybody should be encouraged to just run a, a node blind with for for no reason. Even if this stuff is easy for some, the goal of UX is maximum throughput, and it definitely isn't easy for all. I think I would disagree. At least that my goal. Yes, maybe the goal of UX is maximum throughput. Maybe that's why I'm a little suspicious of the term UX. Because maximum throughput, throughput to where? You know, that's it's way more important to me is the where, <laughs> the, the how for. Despite there being a right way to Bitcoin, people still leave money on exchanges and a very low percentage are running a full node. As I pointed out in my marketing article, users face two opposing forces. Now, one thing, you don't need to have a full node to get your money off of exchanges, right? Which maybe he's not. He, he has and. He's, he's probably saying those as two separate things. But, you know, you can have a wallet, send it to that wallet. Your money's off of an exchange, and you didn't have to set up a Raspberry Pi or buy a hard drive. As I pointed out, as I pointed out in my marketing article, users face two opposing forces. Friction, the negative little voice in the head of the user, which tells them they do not need this. And then inertia, the other negative voice that tells them it is too much effort. Do you honestly think I can't figure out how to set up a node? It is funny that I have to explain this. I figured out how to use Audacity and GarageBand to engineer podcasts. I figured out how to use Squarespace and edit the code for tracking and SEO. Of course I can set up a node, but what is more useful? Hey, option A, hey, I am running a node. Option B, UX hat on, transparency and going through the process and identifying friction points. I vote B. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to disagree on it's great to have someone identifying friction points. We, I, again, I just I'm trying to figure out what is a needed friction and what is weightlifting. When I hit a roadblock, I can easily Google the problem and find the answer. But will everyone? 
I think there is a considerable more there is considerable more value in highlighting friction points than proving my technical prowess. The goal is maximum throughput. Again, I think this is where I'm disagreeing. This everyone idea. You're not going to get everyone to contribute meaningfully and importantly, especially not in the way that you want, unless you do it for them. And if you do it for them, they're not really doing it. So why do you even get them involved? If there's a button, if you ship the easiest node as a button on a website, you 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 have great power now. You have and you got millions of signups. Everybody's signing up and clicking the button, and now they've created all these nodes, you know, on on you your software. And so you won at UX, uh, but what do those people have now? And, and and you have a lot of power over the network, so so that you maximize throughput. Good job, but what did you? Where did you end up? And so this idea that having more people do less gets you with gets you a better result than a few people doing more is I think what's up for debate here. By going through this process, do you think more or less people are going to set up a note? I think he's referring to his own process. Uh, I struggle to see how it is the latter. And I've already found so many things which help will help in a guide to setting up a node. It's awesome. The podcast has always been about being accessible, asking the simple questions, and supporting beginners. I'll let you into a secret. Sometimes I ask questions I know the answer to as I want the guest to explain it, not because I'm a clueless moron. There is a significant gulf between what a hardcore Bitcoiner expects of a casual Bitcoiner. The significant majority will not Bitcoin like you. Sorry, but they won't. They will literally not give a fuck about how it works. This is why hardware wallets have had success. Should these people be excluded from Bitcoin? Oh, no, I clicked off the tweet. I'll probably never. Oh, there I got it back. Because they don't meet your high standard? Of course not. Bitcoin is for anyone. Again, I'm agreeing there. Um, he quote tweets uh, uh, Stefan Levera. Yeah, typical progression in my opinion. One, buy coins, leave them, on, leave them on exchange, risk getting wrecked. Two, get a hardware wallet, trust hardware vendor or Electrum public servers. Three, run a node, but not connected to your hardware wallet setup. That's as far as I've ever gotten. I ran a node and I had a hardware wallet, but I did not have them <laughs> working uh, together in the sense of um, verifying my own transactions. Four, run a node and connect it to your hardware setup. Uh, for example, your own Electrum server. Okay, so back to Peter. How do we take people on this journey? Remember, people being able to figure out how to set up a node isn't enough. The question is, how do we make more people realize its importance and ensure maximum throughput? For me, it is education, design, and marketing. That evil word, marketing. Those who, te who use technical snobbery and shame are not cut out for this, they aren't able to empathize with the most ba basic of users. Anyways, thanks to everyone who has been in touch to help in the last past couple days. Um, I guess it seems like I do agree with like most of what he's saying here, but there is a, the technical snobbery. I mean, I think a lot of people feel like this about going to the gym. They think they're going to be judged the hell out of there. Everybody's going to laugh that they showed up fat and they shouldn't be fat because they're at a gym and everybody at a gym is in shape. You know, like there's a lot of myths we tell, tell ourselves, but there's also um, like you go, I don't know. I guess I don't have a lot of gym experiences, but I feel like in a lot of sports, like you do have like a one-upmanship. You have a competitiveness. You have there's something to to getting really good results is not just about coddling and marketing. You know, there's a there's challenging as well. I think that's what's interesting is that 
the absolute best and most, you know, the best results come from people who challenge each other, not just praise each other and lift each other. The, the, you know, I'll lift your weight for you, LeBron James, so you're stronger next time you play basketball, <laughs> you know? No, it's like, I'm going to try to destroy you in this game and, uh, and make you look like a fool. And if I succeed, you're going to work harder next time. You know, I, I think there's something to that. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe nerds are shit. I mean, I don't know all the context of when he did the uh, Peter McCormack did this tweet storm, but uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of nerds who shame people for being dumb. Um, but I also think there's something important about it. It's sort of like. Um, I mean, I've I've had this experience with my parents with computers where kind of at a certain point in life, you know, they've been pretty technical. My mom would always like write on the computer and do her email and stuff like that. My dad's a graphic designer, so he's been using Photoshop for like as long as I've been alive, it feels like. He, they at some point stopped learning new things about the computer. And, and when they ask me to help them with a computer problem, they don't learn what I teach them they see me doing an arbitrary series of clicks. Like, like if I provided them with a list of the X, Y coordinates of where I clicked to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish on the computer, it would be as, uh, that's about what they are currently absorbing when I help them out on the computer. <laughs> um, which is kind of sad to me because it means like, one, I've got to do it for them every time, right? Or it just gets un goes undone. Like maybe I do it for them when I'm home, and then when I'm not there, they don't do it. And um, so, th in some sense, it makes them weaker. It makes them more reliant on me. I, you know, I have to do it over and over. Um, so, it, it and I, but I really believe that it's mostly a mindset thing. Where if they if they felt like they could still learn new computer things, then they would approach it differently when they were asking for help. And they would try to kind of understand the concepts like, okay, I get it. I need to open up this program. So I need to use the launcher. Okay, so the launcher is open this way. And, it, and, and, and build a web of concepts that allow them to not only be able to accomplish this specific task, but then other tasks as well. Which is, I mean, a lot about what this is about. Like, you know, the same sort of skills that help you run a node are going to help you on a lot of other things that you want to do in Bitcoin. And every time some new bleeding edge thing comes out in Bitcoin, uh, it will be the hardest thing to use until, you know, it, it, it matures. And so if you want to be able to use any, like, new newer technologies, like, you know, for a little while there, multisig was the sort of, like, this is a more advanced use case and you need to be a little more advanced to do this or you need like the help of like Casa to do it. Anyways, I feel like I've been rambling for a while. Uh, I've got to get to airport pretty soon. Uh, man, I really feel like, I don't know. I'll, uh, I don't think I don't think I'm ready to publish this yet. I feel like I still need to think it over. I want to run it by some people and stuff. But thank you for listening. I'll try to at least put some links uh, into the show notes. And I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you um, I hope you choose to lift the weights, uh, if you know what I mean. And uh, have a good day.